Please let us rise together. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. God, our provider, help, help us. us. It is it hard, hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for life in the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. Amen. Tree. 
He asked that he might die. It is enough now, O oh Lord. Take away my life, for I am no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down under the broom tree and fell asleep. Suddenly an angel touched him and said to him, Get up and eat. He looked, and there in his head was a cake baked on hot stones and a jar of water. He ate and drank and lay down again. The angel of the Lord came a second time, touched him, and said, Get up and eat, otherwise the journey will be too much for you. He got up and ate and drank. Then he went to the strength of that food, 40 days and 40 nights, the horror of the mount of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will read responsibly from Psalm 34. I will bless the Lord at all times. The praise of God shall never ever be in my mouth. I will glory in the Lord. Let the lowly hear and rejoice. Proclaim with me the greatness of the Lord. Let us exalt God's name together. I saw the Lord who answered me and delivered me from all my tears. Look upon the Lord and be radiant, and let not your faces be ashamed. I called in my affliction, and the Lord heard me and saved me from all my troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear the Lord and delivers them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are they who take refuge in God. Our second reading is from the fourth chapter of Ephesians. So then, putting away falsehood, let all of us speak the truth to our neighbors, for we are members of one another. Be angry, but do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger, and do not make room for the devil. Thieves must give up stealing, Rather, let them labor and work honestly with their own hands, so as to have something to share with the needy. Let no evil talk come out of your mouths, but only what is useful for building up, as there is need, so that your words may give grace to those who hear. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with which you were marked with a seal for the day of redemption, Put away from all you all bitterness and wrath and anger and wrangling and slander, together with all malice, and be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ has forgiven you. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children, and live in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. life. I am the bread of life. 
Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Christ. Please be seated. If you have not figured this out by now, the sixth chapter of the Gospel of John is basically the bread of life discourse or the teachings of Jesus about this bread of life. And as we talked two weeks ago, when Jesus fed the multitudes, the 5,000 men plus the women and children, all with those five barley loaves and those two little fish that that young boy brought forward, that he placed in the hands of Christ, trusting that, well, he would know what best to do with them. And he did. He fed all of those people, and they had 12 baskets left over after they collected the bread. And then last week we heard about Jesus and his disciples trying to go to the other side to get away from all of these folks, and yet they followed and Jesus said, you're just following me because you want me to fill your bellies again. But he said, I've come not to feed you, not your bellies, but rather I've come to nourish your soul. And he continues on to tell them that I am the bread that has come down from heaven. And as we had talked before, that those people surrounding them, they would understand because in those days, the Torah, the scriptures themselves, they were considered the word of God, but they were also considered the bread of life. And so what Jesus was saying is that not only am I the bread of life, but I am the word of God. And of course that upset a lot of people. Now how does that affect us? Well, in the first chapter of the Gospel writer of John, he tells us about this word of God. And for those of us who may have forgotten it, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, full of grace and truth. We have beheld His glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father. So Jesus not only saying that He is the bread of life, but also saying that He is the Word of God. And not just the written Word of God, not just the spoken Word of God, but even the sacramental Word of God. Because He is saying, this bread of life that I have given you is my very flesh. Now in the early days of Christianity, when people were persecuting Christians, one of the things that they held against them was they believed that all Christians were cannibals. Why would they believe that? Well, because they adhered to Jesus' word. When they gathered and they came and had that holy meal, that Eucharist, they said the same words that we normally say. They said the words of Jesus himself. This is my body, or this is my flesh, given for you. This is my blood, shed for you. Well, we receive that body and blood, but we receive it in the bread and wine. But because a lot of people were on the outside looking in, they just thought those words were literal, and that they were actually sacrificing human beings. But what Jesus was telling them, I am going to give to you this bread of life, not only the Word of God, but the true Word of God. That God so loved the world that He sent His Son. He did not send His Son to condemn, but rather to save. And because I am going to go in obedience to the Word of God, I give my life up so that you might live. And He went to that cross and He died on that cross that His body and blood were given for the world so that we might live, not just here and now, but forever in God's kingdom. And that all who believe in Him shall have eternal life. Now a lot of folks did not want to hear about that. Why would they not want to hear this good news? 
why is it that the people who had heard of Jesus' teachings probably had witnessed some of the miracles? Because by now, not only has he fed the multitudes, but he's also walked on water. He's healed a nobleman's son. He's turned water into wine. He's raised the daughter of Jairus. He's made the deaf to hear, the blind to see. And yet they still could not believe. They could not recognize that God was with them. And therefore, they did not want to hear his word. I think it is as the prophet Amos, who had come before Jesus, and what Amos had said was something very, well, I think it's something that helps us to understand not only the mindset of the people in Jesus' day, but also maybe the mindset of people today. Amos tells us in his 8th chapter, Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord God, when I will send a famine on the land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. In other words, there is going to be a famine among all nations where no one wants to hear or recognize the word of God. It was happening in the days of Jesus and it is happening even today as well. That a lot of people do not want to hear the word or if they do hear the word, they truly don't know the word of God. I mean, it is one thing like the Pharisees and scribes to have memorized chapter and verse everything that is the Word of God, but still not know the Word of God because you do not know God. And the only way that we can know God is by His Word. That as we read Scripture, as we understand Scripture, as we meditate upon God's Word, as we pray to God, as we share this Word with one another, then we truly get to know the will of God. And in knowing the will of God, well then, things happen. We can no longer be as we were. God would not leave us in that sorry state that He found us. Rather, He wants to change us so that we might become a reflection of Him. And sometimes that's scary, is it not? We like who we are just as we are, but God... He's got other plans for us. He's got more important things for us to do. He has a higher calling for each and every one of us. And that calling simply is to be imitators of His Son. Jesus gave us that commandment on Monday, Thursday. To love one another as I have loved you. By this others will know that you are my disciples. By the way that you love one another. He did not say to go out into this world and condemn people. He did not say to get angry. He did not say to make threats against other people. I mean, think about this. As Jesus is being nailed to the cross, as they are piercing His flesh with those spikes, He had every right to be angry. He had every right to curse them. He had every right to cast heaven upon them. And what does He do? He says, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. There was grace, there was mercy. Even in the midst of persecution, even in the midst of the world being spiraling out of control, even though the children of God themselves, they wanted to kill God. Even then, God and Jesus said, Father, forgive them. He did not spew hate. He did not tell them you do not deserve the kingdom of God. In fact, as he's on that cross in between those two thieves, when the one thief finally realizes what is going on and he says, this man is innocent. We are guilty. We deserve this condemnation. But he does not. And then he says, Jesus, remember me in your kingdom. Now Jesus, of course, being a devout Jew, could have said, Dude, you messed up. You're condemned. You're lost. But even then, He looks at that man and says, Truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. That grace, that love, that mercy, that comes from knowing God, 
And the only way we can know God is by His living Word. That as we come together here to receive that body and blood, it truly is the body and blood of Jesus Christ. And therefore, what we receive, we take into ourselves. And therefore, we carry God with us. So that when we go out into this world, we too can be little Christ in the world. That we go out into this world not to condemn, not to tear down, but to build up, to lift up, to love even those we don't want to love. To bring good news to others. To come in peace and with joy. Not in anger and division and hate. But we come into this world to share this Christ with those that we meet. It will not always be easy. But the good news is we never go alone. For Christ goes with us. He will give us the words and everything we need so that if we are true to our calling, He will allow us to plant the seeds. Those seeds of faith that we may never see germinate and completely come to fruition, but we trust that it will happen. But first, we must know the Word of God. We must know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. We must know Him as well, if not better, than we know ourselves or our spouses or our brothers and sisters. And the only way we can do that is to immerse ourselves in His Word. To talk with one another about our faith. To study Scripture, to meditate on Scripture. To listen to those who come and teach. To lift each other up in prayer. Trusting that God will answer. And when we do that, then we are following in His footsteps. When we do that, that Word becomes real, not just for us, but more importantly, for the world in which we live. That is the Word of God. The one that came down from heaven. The one who left that beautiful place to suffer and die to redeem you and me. Not because we deserved it. Not because we could earn it. Not because we could say all the right prayers. Not because we get down on our knees. But simply because God loves you. And when we believe that, and when we trust in that, eternity is ours. Believe in that bread of life. Believe in the Word of God. Let that Word of God become part of you. Live in that Word. And more importantly, love in that Word.
faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Calling on the Spirit of Wisdom to guide our hearts and our minds, let us pray for the Church, the world, and all in need. Reignite the prayer of the Church. By your Spirit, root your Church around the globe in prayer and spiritual practices. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We rely on the goodness of your creation in everything we do. We pray for trees that offer shade and for our fellow creatures that depend on the trees for shelter and food. Sustain the work of all who advocate for forest and wilderness areas. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Guide our leaders and nations with the spirit of justice and mercy. Let no evil come out of our mouths, but rather let us extend grace. We pray for our enemies. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Sustain feeding ministries and organizations such as ELCA, World Hunger, and our local food pantries. We work and pray for a day when hunger is no more. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We pray for this congregation and for all who are gathered. Be present among anyone who cannot be with us today. Be with all who are hurting, grieving, or ill. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We remember the saints who have gone before us in faith. Trusting in the promise of the resurrection, we find hope in your communion of saints of all times and all places. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Heavenly Father, we do approach your throne. And we ask, Father, for healing and restoration to wholeness. We ask for guidance, comfort, and care. But most of all, Father, we ask for your presence in the lives of those we now name out loud. Father, we lift up to you today Cooper, Eloise, Fran, Sue, Dick, Hazel, Vera, Grady, Michelle, Mervyn, Madeline, Mary, Joe, Jake, Mike, Kathy, Matthew, Ainsley, Sam, Bill, Evelyn, Trevor, Vienna, Margaret, Sam, Kathy, Damon, Sandra, June, Pat, Marlene, Alan, Elaine, Veda, Betty, Linda, Dar, Bob, Elizabeth, Bensi, Rosa, Sharon, Connie, Rick, Roger, Lucas, Dick, Margie, Shirley, Tom, Susan, Joe, Braden, Betty Lou, Kathy, John, Joanne, Ashley, Casey, Hus Hudson, Madeline. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks that Andy is with us once again that your healing hand had been upon him even before his surgery, through that time of surgery and recuperation. We pray that he knew your presence, he felt your peace, and we pray as he faces his next procedure that he knows that you are there as well, and that you will see him through that, 
and that you will bring us him home once again to us. We thank you for the care that Linda gave him, and we give you thanks for their lives together. Father, we thank you that Cameron and his family made it through those storms, that even in the depths of that devastation, you are there, you are guiding us, you are protecting us, you are saving us. Help us to remember, Father, as you told your disciples, and we'll get you to the other side. Let us find peace even in the midst of doubt, even in the midst of the storms in this lifetime. And let us give thanks for each and every day that we have with you. Father, we pray for all of our fur babies and those that we take care of. Father, it is so hard sometimes to know when they are not feeling well. And we pray because they are your creation and your creatures that you watch over them and you restore them to wholeness as well. Father, we pray so much for those who are battling through any types of addictions. We pray, Father, that they might come to know that the love of Christ is available to all people. Father, help them to see that there is restoration in you. There is forgiveness, there is grace. Be with them and their families through this struggle. Help them, Father. Restore them to all wholeness. And Father, we pray for all of our brave men and women who serve in our military forces, our frontline workers, our first responders. We pray that as they go about their lives, that you go with them, guide them, and bring them safely home to their families. We lift up these prayers to you, gracious God. Receive them into your holy kingdom. Amen. And now may the peace of Christ be with you always. Let us greet one another in that same peace.
Amen.
Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray. Amen. The blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon you now and forever. Amen. Amen.